Hey, Seth David here from the world-famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated, and in this edition of Nerd's Guide to the Galaxy, I want to talk to you about return customer payments, right? Return deposited items. Now, it's interesting. The... Um, the inspiration for this comes from the fact that I recently realized that uh, this was like one of the first videos I ever did on QuickBooks Desktop was this topic. And I, I remember I had written it up in one of my first blogs, and I got this glowing comment from somebody who said that he had had like five interns uh, in his company trying to help him figure out how to record this, and and none of them knew how to do it. And then he watched my video and learned in five minutes, so, which was a great testimonial for me, of course. Uh, but I was shocked recently when I realized I had never done an updated one and had never done it with QuickBooks Online. Previously, I'd combined the two concepts of when a customer's payment is returned, as well as when a payment, a check that you might have written, got returned. In this case, I'm going to focus solely on the returned customer payment, and I'm going to show you a way of doing it that I've never seen anybody else teach. A lot of it is overlapping with the way others teach it, but there's one particular part of this that I think makes it more efficient and even more bulletproof, not to mention just easier, actually, to do and to record. So let's take a look at my screen, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So uh, here we are in the balance sheet, okay? And if I go over to the profit and loss, you'll see that what we have so far this year for income is $7,500 in accounting services for a single invoice that we posted. And that money has been deposited here into Bank of America 1234 account. Uh, so let me wait till the screen refreshes. And I always like to do this just to kind of show you the updates to the activity as we move along. So you can clearly see how the transactions we're recording impact uh, what we're doing, the different accounts and the different financial statements in QuickBooks Online. So now the bank comes along and says, hey, we're going to take that $7,500 back because the uh, customer's bank you know, returned the payment, charged it back. So how do we do that? The first thing we'll need to do is we'll need to make sure that we've got a clearing account set up for this. So that part's simple. We're gonna, if you don't already have something, then you can create a bank account and call it cash and checks clearing. That's what I love to call it. And this kind of a clearing account is gonna come in handy for a lot of things where you have to clear anything relating to cash and checks through. So you'll see I've got that here. Notice it's classified as a bank account and notice it's balance right now is zero. Before you're going to enter anything like this where you're gonna be using a clearing account, you always want to make sure that you're starting out with a zero balance because if there's other sort of unresolved activity in there, that can create a lot of confusion. So there's a little pro tip. Make sure you're starting at zero. If not, go and clean it up. Do whatever you have to. It will just go a long way to making sure that you don't mess up this one, right? Plus, it suggests that you left something unfinished that probably needs to get finished. So make sure you're starting at zero, okay? Uh, the next thing we're going to need is we're going to need a product or service that's mapped to this cash and checks clearing account. And that's one of the keys. See, the way others teach you how to do this, you would need a separate NSF product for this bank account or for this one or whichever one this might have happened with. The way I'm gonna show you, we're only gonna need one and we're gonna use this clearing account. And you're gonna see even the way the transactions get recorded in a couple minutes uh, is a lot cleaner in my opinion. So. Uh, let's take a look at what that product or service that we need looks like. So we'll go to sales and products and services. And here's customer NSF. I'll click edit. If you don't have one, you'll click new. And then this is how you'll set it up. Call it, if you don't like what I've called it, call it whatever you like. And the main thing is for the income account, it's going to be mapped to cash and checks clearing, which brings up an important point. Even though this says income account, it doesn't mean it has to be an income account. Okay. So we're going to map this item that way we can use it on an invoice and we can ping this account with the amount that we're going to associate with it. So make sure you've got the clearing account and the product set up. If you don't pause the video, get caught up to this point and then we can move forward. Now the first transaction we're going to need to record is simple once we've got the, the account that we need set up because the bank's going to come in, like I said, and they're going to take away the $7,500. So we're going to record an expense. And the payee can be the bank, because that's who actually took the money away. It might be tempting to want to put the customer in there, but I wouldn't. They're not, well, they're kind of getting this money back, but that's between them and their bank. Use your bank who took the money away from you for this transaction. It's the best way to go. Okay, and the invoice, the original invoice date was on the 1st. So let's assume this happened uh, a few days after they paid it. So let's say... Um, you know, I think they paid it. I forgot to check the payment date. So you should check the payment date. But let's say they took the money out on the 13th, right? Maybe if they paid it a few days before that. And over here, we're just going to use cash and checks clearing. Yeah. 
and there it is. Okay, and of course the amount is 7,500. Right, so nothing's happening to income here. We're literally just taking the money out of our bank account and parking it in another account on the balance sheet for a minute, and then we'll get to clear it out with the invoice we're gonna post next. So the other thing is we'll have to deal with the, let's say $20 fee that the bank might've charged us. They will usually take that out separately. So let's just say save and new. Okay, and presumably this would be on the same day. Now the category here is not gonna be cash and checks clearing. It's going to be, you know, bank fees. Bank charges, $20. And we'll say save and close now. Okay, and now my report refreshes. And over here I can see there's the deposit that I originally put into the bank. And that was on February 2nd. Okay, and then February 13th, the bank comes in and says, hey, we're, we're, uh, we're taking the money out. Uh, and then there's a $20 fee. So at this point, my bank account is perfectly accurate, perfectly up to date, right? This is B of A what happened. Again, we got the payment on the original invoice. Now they took the money out and they also took out a $20 fee. So that part's done. Okay, if I back up to the balance sheet, you'll see we now have $7,500 in the cash and checks clearing. And there it is. So let's go in there because from here on out, I want to kind of reconcile this account and make sure that everything zeroes out. Now, the next thing we want to do is we, we need to put the balance back on the customer's account. And we also want to do that retroactively. All right. So if the client didn't pay us till the 13th and then their check balances, we shouldn't give them credit for being 13 days less sort of overdue on their payment. We want that the date of that receivable to go back to the first of the month, which was the same date as the original invoice, right? That's really important, especially just kind of for our records, you know, if we're dealing with a client who typically pays late and we need to look at that data, we want to be able to see how long on average does it take them to pay us, right? There's, these details are important. They matter. So the next thing we're going to do now that we're in the cash and checks clearing, and let's just quickly label this so it's really clear what we're looking at here. Okay, so we're going to keep this handy. I'll go to a different tab now, and we're going to create the invoice that we need. So we're going to invoice... my deadbeat client. Okay, and this is the critical piece here, is this needs to go back to the first of the month. Okay, and now we're gonna use our NSF product that we created, right, the customer NSF. And this is gonna be for the $7,500. Now remember, this is mapped to the cash and checks clearing. You're gonna see in a minute, that's how we're gonna end up zeroing out that account. So nothing's impacted income. One of the important considerations here is that we wanted to make sure we don't invoice the client again for the actual services causing income to duplicate. This is one of the common mistakes people make when they're not really thinking it through. And then we end up doubling income and we're only ever gonna get paid once for that, right? So everything here, we're just running it through the balance sheet. But the critical part is making sure that accounts receivable ages from the first of the month, the same day as the original invoice. And then down here, we'll add one more line. And I have a product called Bank Fee Reimbursement, and that's mapped to my reimbursed expenses income account. And the, one of the main points for doing this this way, as opposed to just pointing it directly against the expense account is the bank charged us $20. We're going to charge our customer 25 because we're basically charging them a surcharge of $5 for our troubles because we had to now take time to do accounting work uh, to because they bounced their payment to us, right? So that probably, the $5 probably doesn't even nearly cut it as far as whatever time somebody's going to have to spend just recording these transactions. And if you break it down on how much time they spent, you get the point. So $25 bank fee reimbursement, $7,500 is going to go back against that cash and checks clearing. We will now have a receivable on the books for $7,525 dating back to the first of the month. Save and close. And let's take a look at some reports and make sure that everything's working exactly as expected. 
Okay, so here we're back on the, the income statement. And as you can see, we still just have the $2,500 in original income from that first invoice. Uh, at the $7,500 for that and the $25 now shows up under reimbursed expenses, which offsets this $20 here that's in the expenses for what we paid to the bank, right? So this is how everything kind of lines up beautifully. If I go back here to cash and checks clearing, you'll see I've got my invoice and then the expense. Okay, let's collapse that so we can see a little bit more of this at once. And we'll just kind of narrow that down. Okay, so you've got the invoice for cash and checks clearing for $7,500, it comes in as a negative, and that zeroes out with the expense from the 13th to 7,500, which is when the bank took the money out. And this zeroes out perfectly. So everything's in balance, everything's working. If I go back to my balance sheet, Okay, we can see that B of A is still perfect, right? Cash and checks clearing is zero. And again, as I said, we have the right amount of income. We didn't duplicate anything. So this is bulletproof. And if you ask me, this is a lot cleaner because the other way that they teach, you would have an NSF product for each bank account so that you would have to pick the right one depending which bank account this happened in. And then you'd end up with an invoice showing up as a transaction type in a bank account that also lines up with an amount that's being taken out. It would basically be this item here that would be coming in, but instead of seeing expense here, you would see an invoice. And it's, at the end of the day, it's right, but it just looks weird to me. I personally hate seeing an invoice transaction type lining up with a an amount that's coming out of a bank account. Normally we associate an invoice with incoming funds, not outgoing funds. So again, from and this is probably from the you know my audit background, it just looks, looks weird to me. And to me, it raises questions because it looks weird. So to me, this is much cleaner. It's a thousand percent more bulletproof. And I think it's easier because now we only need the one product or service. Doesn't matter which bank account it happened in because we're just gonna record an expense from that bank account into that cash and checks clearing. And that cash and checks clearing can be used no matter which bank account the original product problem happened in. That, my friends, is how you handle return customer payments in QuickBooks Online. As always, I hope you uh, had some fun here, learned something along the way. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you in the galaxy.